facts. Number one, Florida State Trooper files a lawsuit after getting stalked by other officers. In October 2011, something extraordinary happened on the highways of Florida. A state trooper named Donna Jane Watts pulled over a speeding Miami officer, Fausto Lopez, who was zooming along at insane speeds of 120 miles per hour. Dashcam footage from the trooper's car shows her giving chase to the speeding Miami officer. Once the speeding Lopez notices that he's being pursued, he pulls over to the side of the road. Trooper Watts gets out of her car with her gun pointed and tells Lopez to show his hands. Trooper Watts tells Lopez to get out of his car and turn around. He tries to talk his way out of the arrest by telling Watts that he was on his way to an off-duty job. But Watts didn't pay attention to anything he had to say and put the cuffs on him. The arrest was celebrated by the media and public for how courageous it was. After all, an officer was holding another officer accountable for their reckless actions. But little did Trooper Watts know that her act of courage would set off a chain of events that would have her questioning her own safety and sanity. After the incident, Trooper Watts drew the ire of the entirety of the Florida State Police. In the days and months that followed, a whopping 88 police officers decided to take matters into their own hands. How? By using the confidential police driver database called David to keep tabs on Trooper Watts and all her private information. They went to great lengths to make her life miserable. Prank calls, pizzas, and even human feces found their way to her doorstep. She became a target, constantly aware of lurking cars outside her house and scared to open her mailbox for fear of finding something dangerous. The constant harassment not only threatened her well-being, but also made her doubt if her own colleagues would have her back in dangerous situations. She even contemplated moving away to escape the torment. In response to the officer's despicable actions, Trooper Watts took them to court. She filed a 69-page lawsuit against the 88 officers from 25 jurisdictions from Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. Fortunately, 83 of these officers ended up settling the lawsuits. The most notable of these settlements came from the Broward Sheriff's Office of $6,000. Hollywood and Lauderhill decided to settle for $5,000 and $6,500 respectively, while Margate paid $10,000 to avoid being listed in the lawsuit. The city of Miami, where the five remaining officers worked, also chose to settle for $24,500 in December. However, the department's five officers, Pablo Camacho, Roshan Milligan, Jesus Pedraza, Jamie Ramirez, and David Cizerno, refused to back down. They wanted their cases to be settled in court. Even the Miami Department's internal affairs investigations confirmed that the officers' database searches were not justified, leading to official reprimands but no further consequences. Their defense was a curious one. These officers argued that they simply wanted to be able to identify her for their own safety. According to their attorney, Robert Bushel, they looked her up because she pointed a gun at an officer and they work in the area. There's no connection they harassed her. Bushel said. Initially, Trooper Watts won her legal battle against the five Miami officers. However, they appealed the ruling. Three judges, Frank Hull, Stanley Marcus, and Charles Wilson, reviewed the case and, in a surprising twist, overturned the original decision. They determined that the officers had not violated the law and should not face legal repercussions. In February 2017, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in Florida concluded that the officers had not accessed Trooper Watts' information for an explicitly forbidden purpose under the Driver's Privacy Protection Act. Therefore, they were granted qualified immunity, and the case was sent back to the district court with a ruling in favor of the officers. Because Watts failed to show that the officers accessed her information for a purpose that was clearly not permitted by the Driver's Privacy Protection Act, we need not address whether their actual purpose was permitted under the DPPA, the judges wrote. Accordingly, we conclude that the district court erred in denying the defendant's qualified immunity. We reverse and remand to the district court for entry of judgment in favor of the defendants. In the end, the court gave a pretty controversial ruling, despite the five officers admitting to accessing the trooper's private information. But the ruling on our next story is a bit more straightforward. Up next, we talk about a female officer who thought she got fired for supporting a black community movement. Number two, Warrensville Heights officer files a discrimination lawsuit after getting fired. In July 2016, Nakia Jones, a former police officer who had dedicated her service to the Warrensville Heights Police Department since 2002, found herself in the midst of a global news frenzy. It all started when she took to her Facebook page and shared a video that would catch the attention of millions of people around the world. In the emotionally charged video, Nakia expressed her profound hurt and outrage over the tragic shooting death of Alton Sterling, who was killed by two police officers in Louisiana. The video struck a chord with people, garnering over 8 million views. In the video, Nakia had a message for her fellow officers, especially white police officers, 
urging them to put down their uniforms if they harbored any racist feelings against minorities. Take it off! If you're afraid to go and talk to an African-American female or a male or a Mexican male or female then because they're not white like you, take the uniform off. You have no business being a police officer. Nakia also shared a heartfelt plea to young African-Americans. She wants black Americans to be role models for their future generations and ask them to put down their guns and start looking for better paths. An intelligent black man. You man, I need for y'all to stand up. Get these young men, mentor them, teach them. Nakia's video made huge waves in the media and the public sphere. Her words reached the ears of then President Barack Obama. She was even invited on a television panel on ABC with the president to have a conversation about the pressing racial issues in America. However, Nakia's rise to fame had unintended consequences within her own police department. In her own words, Nakia says that her co-workers at the Warrensville Heights Police Department became irate and refused to speak to her. Initially, Nakia did not face any reprimand from the city for her video. Nevertheless, fate had another challenge in store for her. In 2017, a year after her video made waves, Nakia found herself facing a different battle, a battle for her job. She was fired from her position in the department. The city claimed that her termination was not a direct consequence of the video. Instead, they alleged that Nakia had misused six time hours leading to the decision to let her go. But Nakia felt different. She thought that the termination was a direct consequence of her viral video. In March 2018, she filed a federal lawsuit against Warrensville Mayor Brad Sellers and Police Chief Wesley Haynes, alleging that her termination violated her First Amendment rights. She also claimed that as an African-American female officer, she had to face gender and racial discrimination during her time in service. In the suit, Nakia detailed the intentional emotional distress she experienced throughout her time in the department. However, the city officials maintained that Nakia's termination had no correlation with the video. Instead, they argued that they grew suspicious after seeing Nakia participating in speaking engagements, travels, and even attending weddings while still receiving workers' compensation. These activities took place in the months following a car accident Nakia had been involved in while on duty in May 2017. The events leading up to Nakia's dismissal unfolded in October 2017. She was scheduled to return to work on the 9th, but she called in sick because of a headache that day and the following day as well. These claims raised eyebrows within the city administration, which forced Mayor Sellers to conduct an investigation. On her next scheduled workday, October 13th, Nakia again called in sick for three days, this time for the same persistent headache along with a flare-up of lupus. But this time around, they had eyes on the officer and what they discovered was shocking. The surveillance team witnessed Nakia boarding a plane bound for Philadelphia, where she was apparently scheduled to speak at a conference. Chief U.S. Judge District Patricia Gagan delivered her ruling, reviewing all of the evidence and arguments presented. The judge wrote that Nakia had failed to show a correlation between the videos she posted in July 2016 and her termination in October 2017. In her decision, the judge concluded that there is no causal connection between the plaintiff's protected speech and her termination, and defendants have demonstrated that there was a legitimate reason for the decision. Additionally, the judge dismissed Nakia's claims of intentional infliction of emotional distress in a hostile work environment. Mayor Sellers said in a statement that Warrensville Heights officials are pleased with Judge Gagan's decision. We've always felt that once all the facts of the case were presented, the city's position would be vindicated and the claim made against the city would be proven frivolous, Sellers said in the statement. We will continue to serve Warrensville Heights and its citizens to the best of our abilities. If you want to support the channel and want to watch more of these videos, please subscribe as I upload them regularly.